The Life and Sad Ending of Wolfman Jack Wolfman Jack was born Robert Weston Smith on January 21, 1938. The younger of two children of Anson Weston Smith, an Episcopal Sunday school teacher, writer, editor, and executive vice president of Financial World, and his wife Rosamond Small. Freed had played a role in the transformation of black rhythm and blues into rock and roll music, and originally called himself the Moondog after New York City street musician Moondog. Freed both adopted this name and used a recorded howl to give his early broadcasts a unique character. Smith's adaptation of the Moondog theme was to call himself Wolfman Jack and add his own sound effects. The character was based in part on the manner and style of bluesman Howlin' Wolf. It was at KCIJ that he first began to develop his famous alter ego, Wolfman Jack. According to author Philip A. Lieberman, Smith's Wolfman persona derived from Smith's love of horror films and his shenanigans as a wolfman with his two young nephews. The Jack was added as a part of the hipster lingo of the 1950s, as in Take a Page from My Book, Jack, or the more popular, Hit the Road, Jack. In 1963, Smith took his act to the border when the inter-American radio advertising's Ramon Bosquez hired him and sent him to the studio and transmitter site of XERFAM at Ciudad Acuna in Mexico, a station across the U.S. Mexico border from Del Rio, Texas whose high-powered border blaster signal could be picked up across much of the United States. In an interview with writer Tom Miller, Smith described the reach of the XERF signal. We had the most powerful signal in North America. Birds dropped dead when they flew too close to the tower. A car driving from New York to L.A. would never lose the station. Most of the border stations broadcast at 250,000 watts, five times the U.S. limit, meaning that their signals were picked up all over North America, and at night as far away as Europe and the Soviet Union. It was at XERF that Smith developed his signature style and widespread fame. The border stations made money by renting time to Pentecostal preachers and psychics, and by taking 50% of the profit from anything sold by mail order. The Wolfman did pitches for dog food, weight loss pills, weight gain pills, rose bushes, and baby chicks. There was even a pill called Forex which was supposed to enhance one's sex drive. Some zing for your ling nuts, the Wolfman would say. In the early days, Wolfman Jack made sporadic public appearances, usually as a master of ceremonies for rock bands at Los Angeles clubs. At each appearance, he looked a little different because he had not decided what the Wolfman should look like. Early pictures show him with a goatee. However, Sometimes he combed his straight hair forward and added dark makeup to look somewhat ethnic. Other times he had a big afro wig and large sunglasses. The ambiguity of his race contributed to the controversy of his program. His audience finally got a good look at him when he appeared in the 1969 film A Session with the Committee, a montage of skits by the comedy troupe The Committee. Wolfman Jack started his recording career in Minneapolis, Minnesota, while working at KUXL Radio in 1965 with George Garrett. Garrett helped record the album Boogie with the Wolfman by Wolfman Jack and the Wolfpack on the bread label. He was also responsible for engineering, producing, and assembling the band. Wolfman Jack also released Wolfman Jack and Through the Ages on the Wooden Nickel label. In 1973, he appeared as himself in George Lucas' second feature film American Graffiti. Lucas gave him a fraction of a point. The division of the profits from a film, and the extreme financial success of American Graffiti provided him with a regular income for life. He also appeared in the film's 1979 sequel More American Graffiti, though only through voiceovers. In 1978, he appeared as Bob the Jackal Smith in a made-for-TV movie Dead Man's Curve based on the musical careers of Jan Barry and Dean Torrance of Jan and Dean. Smith appeared in several television shows as Wolfman Jack, including The Odd Couple, 
What's Happening? Vega, Wonder Woman, Hollywood Squares, Married. With Children, Emergency, S5 EP5, and Galactica 1980. He was the regular announcer and occasional host for the Midnight Special on NBC from 1973 to 1981. He was also the host of his variety series The Wolfman Jack Show, which was produced in Canada by CBC Television in 1976 and syndicated to stations in the U.S. He also voiced the chief of the Rama Lama tribe on the TV special Garfield in Paradise in 1986. Jim Morrison's lyrics for The Wasp were influenced by Wolfman Jack's broadcasting. He is also mentioned in the Grateful Dead song Ramble on Rose. He furnished his voice in the Guess Who's Top 40 Hits single Clap for the Wolfman. Wolfman Jack was regularly parodied on the hilarious House of Frightenstein as the Wolfman. An actual werewolf disc jockey with a look inspired by the original The Wolfman movies. A few years earlier, Todd Rundgren recorded the tribute Wolfman Jack on the album Something, Anything. The single version of the track includes a shouted talkover intro by the Wolfman but on the album version Rundgren performs that part himself. Canadian band The Stampeders also released a cover of Hit the Road Jack in 1975 featuring Wolfman Jack. From 1975 to 1980, Wolfman Jack hosted Halloween Haunt at Knott's Berry Farm, which transforms itself into Knott's Scary Farm each year for Halloween. It was the most successful special event of any theme park in the country and often sold out. In 2012, the estate of Wolfman Jack released a hip-hop single featuring Wolfman Jack clips as the vocals. In 2016, clips from the Wolfman Jack radio program were used in the Rob Zombie film 31. On July 1, 1995, Smith died from a heart attack at his house in Belvedere, North Carolina, shortly after finishing a weekly broadcast. He is buried at a family cemetery in Belvedere.